might give you a quick summary of lesson 1-1. One one. might only take five minutes even. Um, the first topic that I would refer to you in lesson 1-1 one one would be the concept of the set builder notation, which is also known as interval notation and domain and range. So over here, we've got Domain is always X. So how far did you go left or how far did you go right on the graph? If you have this parabola here, we went a negative infinity to a positive infinity, left to a negative infinity, right to a positive infinity. Infinities always have the soft or parentheses brackets on them. As opposed to the range in this case, how far did you go up and how far did you go down? My brain always wants me to work top to bottom, but it's always smallest on the left, largest on the right. So in terms of up and down, that would be how low were you? Negative three in this case, it did hit it, the solid dot. So it's a square bracket when you actually reach the point to how high did it go because of the arrows on the end, it's going up to infinity. So set builder notation also has some notation in it. So it might have this variable X and then something that looks like, you can also do it. You can also do that with like a um, uh, inequalities if you wanted to, but I'm assuming by now everybody has learned that, so it would look something like that. Um, over here, on, I just have a couple of other examples. So if the endpoints three and four are included, there'd be square brackets on both ends, hard brackets, some people say. And this one right here, uh, if it was a positive two going in a negative infinity, you know, if that was say the Y, would look something um, like that in it, the inequality notation. So, you know, the, there's a lot of other examples that you can see here. If you look on the other videos that I have posted on the classwork page in Savas Realize, you can find a video that actually goes into much more detail on all those possibilities. Uh, the next thing are these things that are called zeros or roots. And so, they're just the x-intercepts. So in this case, if I said to you this was a negative two and a two, my zeros, x-intercepts, or roots would just be the negative two and two. Sometimes um, you may see them written as order of pairs. If this was another, app, if another example and they wanted to know the zeros, again, it's like when does y equal zero? And so in this case, it would be the 10 miles if that was an example that had actual application and labels on it. Um, the next concept after you get to the zeros and the roots that was labeled, um, it, so you can have a min or a max. So obviously this would be a minimum point. Um, if the graph's talking about where the graph is positive, for this example, the graph is positive on these arms right here. They're above the x-axis. The y values are positive. So let's say this is five and negative five. So the graph would be positive from a negative infinity going to the left there up to the negative five. On the zero itself, it's not positive or negative, so we wouldn't include that. Then there's another area and it would be over here from the positive five to a positive infinity on that side. The negative, where is this graph negative? That would be this dip on the bottom part. So if you came over here and this little smile on the bottom. So again, at the zeros itself, the five and the negative five, they would not be included here either because zero is neither positive or negative. So the graph would be negative in those two spots. Last concept that comes up sometimes is they say, where is the graph increasing or where is it decreasing? And 
what you use for that is if you go from left to right, like you're reading a sentence on this graph, when I went left to right, I would be going down. So on the left side here, from my negative infinity, because that goes on forever, up until I hit the five, that would actually be decreasing. I'm sorry, not even at the five. It goes all the way to the zero point right here where it turns around. So not five, all the way to zero would be decreasing. Infinity is always a parenthesis at the zero right here on the y-axis, it's changing direction. So again, that's not decreasing or increasing, so it wouldn't be included. And on the right side, if you looked over there, starting from that zero and moving to the right, you would always be going up. So the increasing on that side would start at the zero, right down here at the origin again, and it would go forever to the right. So then after you get your increasing, decreasing, your zeros, your min and your max, your positive, your negative parts of the graph, um, I think we have just one last concept from 1-1 that you would need, and that is what's the average rate of change? So average rate of change is just another way of saying slope. So let's just say that I was going to take the example y equals x squared to keep it simple. So if I need to find the slope, and it's asking where, what is the average rate of change on the interval, interval from 2 to 6, what I need to do is plug the 2 into x squared, get a 4, plug the 6 in, get 36, and find the slope between those two points. So how much does it rise from 4 up to 36? That'd be your 32. And how much does it rise from 2 to 6? That'd be your 4, divide them out, my slope, or the funny name they're giving it, the average rate of change, in this case, would be the eight. I think that everything that's everything that was in 1-1. Check those other videos that are on the uh, Savas Realize homework playlist. I think they're all at the bottom, but there's several of those that may help as well.